So there's been some important developments on the California ban on so-called assault weapons. So let's talk about this. But real quick before you jump this video, if you think California's ban on so-called assault weapons clearly violates the second amendment, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to thank one of the sponsors of this channel, which is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I always recommend you take a look into USCCA into getting legal protection, and I will leave a link to them down below if you're interested. Also want to mention that we now have channel merch available, and one of the things you guys were asking for was this text history and tradition shirt, and you wanted it in black, and now it's available. So if you want to pick up some channel merch, if you want to pick up this specific shirt in black, it is now available and you can pick one up using the link down below. So like I said in the intro, in this video, I have an update for you on the current challenges to strike down California's ban on so-called assault weapons. In this video, we will specifically be talking about one of the cases, which is called Rupp v. Bonta. Rupp v. Bonta is a lawsuit that we've discussed multiple times here on the channel, but for many of you new viewers, maybe you're not familiar with this case because it has been a while since we've talked about this specific case. Rupp is a challenge to California's ban on so-called assault weapons, and it's a similar issue that's brought up in the Miller v. Bonta case, which a lot of you are likely familiar with. And the Miller case is currently pending for a decision before Judge Roger T. Benitez in the Southern District of California. But we just got some critical news in the Rupp case that will likely impact the Miller case. Now, for those of you who are not aware, Rupp v. Bonta is a case challenging the state of California's ban on the possession of so-called assault weapons. California Penal Code Section 30510 bans specific makes and models like the Colt AR-15, Steyr Augs, Uzis, etc. If a specific firearm is on that list outlined in 30510, then it's banned in the state of California as a so-called assault weapon. So that was the original ban in the state of California and it's often referred to as the Roberti Roos list. Well, the state of California obviously was not happy with their uh, anti-gun agenda. They wanted to go even further. So they expanded the ban on so-called assault weapons. Then they passed California Penal Code, which became 30515, and that is the characteristics ban. Under California Penal Code section 30515, the state lists types of firearms with specific characteristics. For example, a semi-automatic centerfire rifle with a detachable magazine can only have specific features on it. And if it has these other types of features on it, which are offending features like a flash hider, a pistol grip, a collapsible stock, a forward pistol grip, then the state of California considers them to be assault weapons because they have specific characteristics on that firearm. So the Rupp case is a challenge not just to 30515's characteristic ban, but it's also a challenge to the category one list of makes and models that are banned in the state of California. Rupp v. Bonta was originally heard by a judge in the Central District of California, but that judge ruled in favor of the state of California on a motion to dismiss. So she dismissed the case in favor of the state of California. That decision was then appealed up to the Ninth Circuit and was submitted to a three-judge panel for review. The panel heard oral arguments in October of 2020, but then the case was put on hold and essentially sat on hold while there was another decision that was pending before the Supreme Court, and that was the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin case. Once the Supreme Court issued that ruling in Bruin, the Ninth Circuit then decided not to rule in the Rupp case, but instead they decided to punt the issue back down to the district court to reanalyze that motion to dismiss and the granting of the dismissal and to review it in light of the recent Bruin decision. Now, again, I wanna emphasize that the Rupp case is different from the Miller v. Bonta case. Miller is a challenge to California's ban on so-called assault weapons, but specifically the characteristics ban under 30515. Miller was originally ruled on by Judge Roger T. Benitez in the Southern District of California, but then both of these cases, Miller and Rupp, went before the Ninth Circuit Rupp was the first one that was up before the Ninth Circuit and was up before a three-judge panel. And then essentially what ended up happening is Miller was put on hold behind Rupp because Rupp was a broader challenge and was the first case up before the Ninth Circuit. Now, currently, both of these cases have been remanded back down to the district courts. And right now, we are waiting for Judge Benitez to rule in the Miller case. Well, we received some critical news out of the Rupp v. Bonta case that it will now have a hearing on a motion to dismiss on July 28th and the district court will rule on whether or not they will grant the plaintiffs a motion for summary judgment. If the court grants the motion for summary judgment in favor of the plaintiffs, that means that the Rupp case will be resolved on the merits of the case and California's ban on so-called assault weapons will be found unconstitutional, both the makes and models list and then also the characteristics ban. In a recent court order, the judge in the Rupp case set the case to be resolved and to have a hearing on those motions for summary judgment and that will take place 
right now, currently on July 28th, so at the end of next month. She also set for the summary judgment briefs to be submitted by July 14th. So all the papers on that motion for summary judgment will be due next month on July 14th. The plaintiffs have also submitted their initial brief in support of their motion for summary judgment, and I think it's a really good brief. In the brief, they argued that the Supreme Court recently reaffirmed that modern gun control laws withstand Second Amendment scrutiny only if the government meets its burden to prove that the nation's historical tradition supports such a law. In so doing, it also reaffirmed that there is no tradition of banning arms typically possessed for lawful purposes. California has taken the extraordinary step of generally banning acquisitions and possession of certain rifles that it has unilaterally dubbed with the political pejorative assault weapons, which include the most popular rifles in the country owned by the millions. This case is thus an easy one. The relevant historical analysis has already been done. Because California cannot show that there is a tradition of banning these commonly owned rifles, its law banning them violates the Second Amendment. This court should thus enter summary judgment in plaintiff's favor and vindicate the rights of plaintiffs in all law-abiding adult Californians to access these banned arms. They then add a strong section to show that this case doesn't even need to essentially go to the Bruin analysis and do that whole historical approach. This case can actually be resolved just by looking at the Supreme Court's decision in Heller. The plaintiffs state that, unfortunately, this court need not struggle with determining which approach is correct here because Bruin and Heller already established that there is no tradition of banning commonly possessed arms, which the banned rifles undeniably are. If the state cannot show that the banned rifles are dangerous and unusual weapons, and it cannot, then plaintiffs necessarily prevail. No further analysis is required. And even if this court were to permit the state to attempt to justify the AWCA's rifle ban under Bruin's more nuanced approach, it would quickly become obvious that the state cannot meet its burden, even under the more lenient standard, because there simply is no tradition of banning arms commonly owned for lawful purposes, particularly just for having features that increase their accuracy and control. So this is a strong brief and it clearly and precisely outlines how this outright ban on commonly owned rifles is a violation of the Second Amendment under both Heller and Bruin. The court will hear arguments on the motion for summary judgment in this case on July 28th, and then they will issue a decision after. What's interesting about this now is whether the RUP hearing being set for the end of next month will ultimately put additional pressure on Judge Benitez to issue his decision in the Miller case sooner rather than later. Benitez has been very pro 2A and strategically for the pro 2A side, I would actually rather have his decision hit prior to the RUP hearing or prior to the RUP decision because Judge Benitez has been much more favorable. And the judge here in the RUP case is not very pro 2A. And again, I don't want her to rule on this case before that. So the judge in charge of the Rupp case is Judge Josephine Statton. And prior when she looked at the Rupp case in granting the state of California's motion to dismiss, she applied intermediate scrutiny to uphold the state of California's ban on so-called assault weapons. But for now, California's assault weapon ban issue and the case Rupp will be heard at the end of next month. And this means that we now have two critical rifle ban decisions that will be pending likely at the same time, unless Judge Benitez issues his ruling before then. But if we get any more information, I will let you all know. Also, if you like this video and you like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of toy news. As always, I want to thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget this nation was built by arm scholars, and this nation will be maintained by arm scholars.